Derek, John, do you know what time it is? Direct time, baby. Almost, Derek. It's direct prediction time, Come on, specifically. I want it to be direct time. <laughs> I know. Well, it's almost there, but one step at a time here. So Nintendo just announced a brand new direct for tomorrow, uh, the 13th, at 2 p.m. Pacific time. It's going to be 35 minutes long and focus on Nintendo Switch games. Probably exclusively would be my guess. <laughs> and uh, one of which would be Fire Emblem Three Houses. So hey, at least one, that's one prediction out of the way. So um, now before we get to our official predictions, there is actually a rumor we probably should address because it came from a likely source, which is why we, which is why we reported it ourselves. And that rumor is that uh, is of a list of games from King's L and Resetra that are likely to come out this year, or that he believes are coming out this year, or I, I believe he said this year, if not sometime, sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> um, and those games were Pikmin 3, Mario Maker 2, Fox Boy, a 2D Zelda, Pokemon, and Metroid Prime Trilogy. Now, King Zell did specify that he has no idea whether these will all be in the direct or not. So, I throw it to you guys. What do you think? Do you think these games actually exist? And what are the odds? Or And do you think there's a chance all of these will appear in the direct or not? And then we'll go through them one by one and give our quick thoughts on each. Uh-huh. I think they're all absolutely true. King Zell got the direct right, uh, which is on a Wednesday, which is kind of unprecedented for directs. So they're usually on Thursdays. So, to get this very specific date right days in advance is kind of impressive. So, and, and all these games were kind of speculated and rumors, rumored for a while as well. Like, Prime Trilogy um, specifically has been going around for a long time now. So, yeah, I absolutely do believe it. Um, and there's some exciting stuff in there, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe it as well, just because, I mean, these are all pretty safe bets, to be honest. Like, of course they're going to make a Mario Maker 2. That was one of the most popular games on the on the Wii U. And, yeah, I can imagine a 2D Zelda. We talked about it for a while. Um... Pokemon, duh. <laughs> you know, there's you know a lot of these stuff was like, yeah, of course. Um, the big the big uh, curveball to me is Box Boy, which who knows if that's going to be a collection or a brand new game. But overall, I'd say that's a pretty good list as far as whether or not they'll all appear in the direct. I'd say everything except for Pokemon has a good chance. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, I don't expect Pokemon to be here, but maybe we're getting ahead of ourselves, but I want to go through these one by one. And actually, you know let's just start with Pokemon. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll give, I'll give my prediction as well, Derek. I'll just go off what you were saying. I don't think I'll be here. Pokemon, historically, for the mainline entries, have had their own features, their own directs. They've had their own way of announcing things. Pokemon, or the Pokemon company has been very particular about that, and I don't think it's about to change. Um, I think it's possible it will be announced soon. Uh, in fact, I would be very surprised if it's not, but it's not going to be in this direct. And we do have that Q&A with the Treehouse in New York soon, but that potentially has nothing to do with anything. It could just be literally for that event. But it could also be a follow-up to a potential Pokemon announcement. Uh, so if Pokemon is coming, I, I agree with you guys, probably not in this direct, but I do think it's probably soon, like maybe, maybe in a few weeks' time. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I, I, I don't think the... Treehouse Q and A at the uh, Nintendo store in New York means anything, especially because there's no indication of that being streamed. It just seems like a, more of an event for kids. I mean, there's there's uh -huh. face painting there for God's sake. So, <laughs> you know, I don't think that's going to be a big place for announcement. Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? But that just screams to me fun times with the kids. So yeah, I, I do think Pokemon is going to get announced sometime this month. Makes sense to start building up that hype, especially with a new generation on the way. Uh, but as far as uh, happening during the direct, very unlikely, especially says as Joe Merrick of Cerebi, you know, he knows these things pretty well. And he's like, it's never been, a, a new Pokemon game has never been announced during a direct as far as like, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, all that concerned. <laughs> OK, so now that we all seem to be on the same page that, yes, these games probably exist, but no, they won't all be here. Let's go through the rest real quick. Pikmin 3. So this would be a port to the Wii U version. It would require uh, some significant changes because there is no gamepad this time, uh, which displayed a persistent map in the original game. Do you think that will be in this direct? I do. I think Pikmin 3 is probably coming soon. Um, and one thing I'm excited for, actually, is in the Wii U version, you pretty much always had to have the Wii U gamepad near you because there are specific parts of that game where it just requires you to touch the gamepad to like move the map around and things like that. So to just ditch the gamepad and have a, like a, a nice cleaner style would be really cool. That said, I can't really imagine playing Pikmin without a Wii Remote and Nunchuck anymore. Like that's that's just the ideal style for me. Um, so I guess they might have to come up with like a, a brand new way to play Pikmin on the Switch. 
Well, I mean, they could still use the right Joy-Con as a pointer, like as a, uh, as a Wii Remote style pointer. The only thing you lose is a constant calibration with the uh, sensor bar, which granted is pretty important. <laughs> so, uh-huh. but it can work. We've had games like World of Goo that made pretty good use of it uh, in that manner. Um, it just requires you to manually reset it every now and then. So I think they could probably pretty much lift the control scheme from the Wii U wholesale and just put the map on like a pause screen, like how the other Pikmin games worked. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think that makes sense. Uh, I, I can see them having point on controls because I, I don't think Pikmin is a quite as demanding as something like The World Ends With You where you're constantly waggling that thing around to do different motions and it, it needs constantly recalibrated because of that. It's a little less intensive with Pikmin 3, I, I believe. I've never actually played the game because I never got to Pikmin 2, so whoops. Um, so this is, this is an exciting port for me. It's exciting for me because they're dropping the gamepad. That was my least favorite feature about <laughs> yeah. that game. I, it, I was very... Um, uh, maybe I got more used to it later on in the Wii U's lifespan, but I did not like how it worked in Pikmin 3. It was annoying switching my view from the TV to the screen, so I actually am looking forward to getting rid of that and hopefully having a pointer-based control system. Although I'm also hoping that they'll have more standard features, like, you know, as John is saying, a new control scheme. They could go back to the original Pikmin games, how those worked, uh, with a conventional, you know, where you move the cursor with a left stick, as well as uh, your character that follows it. Um, or they could also bring over the, uh, in handheld form, they could bring over the touchscreen mode they added later on, which was kind of based on the Nintendo Land version of Pikmin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where you tap it and throw your Pikmin at the exact spot that you tap. That'd be so cool. Uh, you know in Star Allies how there's that part where it sort of like plays a song almost? Imagine if when you're playing with split Joy-Con, uh, the HD rumble like makes a whistle noise whenever you try and whistle your Pikmin near you. Oh. <laughs> that'd be pretty great. I like it. Yeah, that'd be pretty So great. yeah. Pikmin 3 is real, I think. Yeah, sure. that, that makes here. sense. It's going to be in the direct. Do you think this finally means we're going to get Pikmin 4 this year? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> um, if we do, it wouldn't be till the tail end of the year. Mm. So, mm. I think it's unlikely, but I do have one prediction about Pikmin 3. I think there will be one brand new epilogue level featuring a new Pikmin, a ghost-type Pikmin that can float through walls, <laughs> and this will set up the events of Pikmin 4. I love okay. the ghost Pikmin type. There would be so many of those available from all the Pikmin that Yeah, I was going to say, that's the easiest type to get. <laughs> I actually do love the idea of an epilogue, though, just because I think uh, Pikmin had those what, data pods or whatever that teased, I think, future events. Uh-huh. So maybe that could help tie into a Pikmin 4. Anyways, let's move on. Mario Maker 2. This is a big one because, uh, I mean, for one, this is a, se- a sequel to a game that was quite popular on the Wii U. I loved uh, well, I technically like a lot the original game. <laughs> um, I just had a great time making levels. It had some annoying restrictions, you know, like you no know, slopes, for instance. But the amount of creativity it enabled was fantastic. So the fact that we're getting a sequel and not a port, going by the rumor, is extremely exciting. And so I also believe this is real. I think it makes sense to do a sequel instead of a port. As for being in this direct, it just seems a little too soon, perhaps, with New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe is coming out. But then again, it's Nintendo, that may not matter. So I'm not sure where I fall on this. What do you guys think? Is Mario Maker 2 going to be in this direct? Is it going to be in the direct? This feels like E3 material. I was going to say the same thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, this this is a sense. big game. It was one of the Wii U's biggest games. I, I don't think they can just put it in a normal direct. But there's there's quite a few things that have to change, though, because the this was one of the only Wii U games that really used the gamepad. Uh, I mean, I guess you probably could transfer it to the Switch's touchscreen, but making it work in docked mode is going to take a lot of fixing up. But it's, it's exciting that this may be coming, though. Because, yeah, the, the original Wii U version did have restrictions. With, with no slopes, pretty much every level had to be as flat as the original Super Mario Bros. Because even yep. Mario 3 had slopes. It was just a, it was a big restriction. So this is a very exciting game, but I don't think it's time for it just yet. I think they're going to wait a little bit. As a, you know, E3 seems like the perfect time. Really get people in there, have a bunch of levels ready for people to try out, have it release in September or October, and it'll blow up. The big, the big question, as John said, is going to be the control scheme, because this it was almost like like this was the game the Wii U was made for. That was by far the best use of the Wii U gamepad, and mm-hmm. I don't know how well they'll adapt that, but you know maybe they'll come up with some kind of elegant solution. I mean. They- the most elegant solution would probably just be where you can only, where you primarily create levels in handheld form, right? So you have access to the touchscreen. Mm-hmm. But that would be annoying if you want to. I mean, what was great about the original game was you could build the levels in the touchscreen and then play them on the TV. You know, you can see it how, how it looks um, in, 
you know, in a more playable environment. Although, I mean, a lot of people play the Switch handheld, so that may not matter in this case. <laughs> uh, in any event, I, I think I agree with you guys. I think this is more of an E3-style game or maybe another Direct-style game. It just seems a little bit premature for it. Uh, I think there's a great chance it is coming this year. But in the event it is shown, I'll give a few predictions here for what, more hopes than anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think to, uh, to help with the control concerns... Um, I think there might be a mobile app in which you can design the games uh, on your phone screen, and then that's reflected in the game. They can play on the TV mm. with the Joy-Cons. Or, this is very unlikely, I'm hoping that they add second Switch functionality. So if you want, if you're a hardcore Mario Maker level creator like me, <laughs> you can go out, buy a second Switch, and use that to instantly create levels and play them on the TV by, uh, you know, in local wireless mode. Um, I think it'll be vertical levels now, slopes will be there. I hope there'll be new themes, maybe brand new themes even for this game. Uh, maybe they could build, like, where they made a 2D version of Mario Odyssey, for instance. How cool oh, would that be? Ooh, that would That's be right. so cool. Take control of the enemies. <laughs> I love the idea, too. Like, a lot of people say, like, maybe add Super Mario Bros. 2, but that game plays so differently to all the other games in the series. And if you were to, like, put in elements like, uh, like the turnips or plucking or anything like that, then the other games would have to be designed around those two. So I think Mario Brothers 2 isn't very likely, but a brand new style. I'm so for that. Oh, e either a brand new style or like Super Mario Land 2. Oh, yeah, that'd be, yeah, that'd be a good one. The Game Boy games have been neglected, sadly. <laughs> what if they brought back Wart? I know we just covered Super Mario Brothers 2, but what if they brought back Wart <laughs> in Super Mario Maker? <laughs> I mean, it'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to it at all, but yeah, that'd be, be kind of cool. Have different villains other than Bowser and Bowser Jr. as like final boss areas. Yeah, that's what we need. We need more bosses. Koopalings it is. Got it. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Now, speaking of things that sound like box or bosses, <laughs> we have boxes in the form of Box Boy, apparently, presumably coming to the Switch. What do you guys think about this? Do you think this will make an appearance in Nintendo Direct? I think this will not only make an appearance, I think it will launch immediately after the Direct. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's I can see that. That's a good prediction. A brand new Box Boy game, not a collection or a port of the 3DS games, just release it immediately. Um, yeah, just put it out there. And build up the hype right away, and maybe it's going to be... That's the thing, I'm so split on whether it's a new game or just a collection. Either one works, but I think a new game probably is a better idea. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's, I don't think a game is particularly resource-intensive either way, <laughs> so... Um, I do hope it's new, although there are probably a lot of people that, that skipped on 3DS as well, especially the third one, which came out closer, well, not that long ago, so um, I have no idea what the sales are, I'm just guessing a lot of people probably didn't play it. And I think releasing it right after the Direct makes a ton of sense. I mean, I know Derek, you said, you know, get the hype, you know, blow out the hype all, the, you know, right away. This is the kind of game that doesn't really garner a ton of hype, no. so <laughs> I think releasing it after the announcement is the best way to get people interested in it. So, especially with how slow the Switch's schedule has been recently, um, we had Mario and then we have Yoshi in a couple months, so they need something uh, for right now, I think, so mm -hmm. that could be a perfect filler title. Alright, moving on to another pretty big one. 2D Zelda. So presumably this more means a top-down Zelda in the style of A Link Between Worlds. Although they went to a strictly 2D, you know, visual style, I'd be okay with that. That'd be pretty neat. <laughs> um, what do you guys, what do you think this looks like and do you think it's going to be in the direct? I think this is going to be a weird game. <laughs> I think Zelda's at the point where they've got their established 3D title out there. Now's the time to get experimental. I think this will not only feature multiplayer components, but I just think it's going to be strange. I think they're going to try stuff they haven't really tried before with this game. And, you know, like, like most Zelda games, people probably won't like it at first, but then as time goes on, eventually they'll come to see that they do like it. I, think, I just think it's going to be a polarizing game. That's just what Zelda does usually with their second outings on consoles. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about 2D Zelda quite a lot in the past, whether it's going to be co-op to take advantage of the Switch, uh, whether Zelda will actually be playable in this co-op idea, or exactly what they'll do with it. There's, you know, We have a ton of ideas from the past about what it might do, and now that we've come to the point where it might actually be a thing, I'm not sure where, in which way Nintendo will pull the trigger, like how it will actually end up, and... I guess it just depends on the scale of it. Like, if it's going to be an eShop exclusive title, probably not uh, as ambitious as we think. If it's actually going to get a full retail release, you know, then the sky's the limit for this. But I'm, I'm not sure which way it's going to go for that. But I do think we'll probably will see 2D Zelda during this uh, Direct. There is no way that 2D Zelda won't get a retail release. In crossbow <laughs> training, well, I guess you need to gun for crossbow training, but my point still stands. <laughs> this game will come to stores. Um, I think it'll treat it, you know, like they have any other any of the other handheld Zelda games. I mean, it'll be a, a full installment, um, just not fully 3D. And I think they will go 
full in on the two or on the two player co-op this time. You got two Joy-Cons, it's the only Zelda type of co-op they haven't done beyond four players. So I think I think now's the time. Um, I think it'll also be playable single player, but I think two player could be a lot of fun in a Zelda game. Give you a more focused, but uh, give you a more focused cooperative experience. Mm -hmm. Here's another prediction for this game to garner the hype, uh, because it may be polarizing because it's a co-op game and people want a, a, a standard single player game. I think they're going to put components of this into Breath of the Wild and have the second player playable within Breath of the Wild. Wait, what? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm trying to process that. <laughs> That's a wild rumor. If that somehow ends up being true to John, I swear to god. <laughs> I like it though. I, I love how John could say any crazy thing, and now we're at the point now. It's like you know, John might be right. <laughs> <laughs> I think he just materializes the stuff as he says it. Like it didn't exist before, but now that he said it, it might. Yeah. So. I work in Nintendo very secretly. Actually, real quick, when do you think a 2D Zelda? Uh, when do you think it will launch? I mean, do we are, we are we all do we all think it'll be in the direct? Even I forget if we specifically said. That. I, I think it will. I be. think it will be. Okay. Um, but I don't think this is going to launch like after the direct, like Box Boy would or could. Um, I think this will probably be a couple of months away, like maybe maybe May or April. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I think it'll come later because we know Yoshi's in March. Oh, March. I, I guess April could work. Yeah, mm -hmm. Yoshi is late March, so maybe. I hope you're right, John. I want to do Zelda now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, another big one. Metroid Prime Trilogy. Is that going to finally materialize in this Nintendo Direct? Yes. I, I feel like this game's done. Like, there's been, <laughs> there's been rumors about this game just being done. Like, um, I think uh, someone from Game Informer actually made a, a post about this game. They've been sitting on this game for a while. I don't know if that's true or not, but it'd be interesting if they have. Because there have been rumors floating around since last year about Prime Trilogy. So if it is done, they can just kind of release it whenever they want. You're right. They, it has been floating around for a while, but whether or not they'll pull the trigger after Prime 4's delay, uh, hard to say. I mean, it, it would be something to appease the fans, but I, I'm not sure if Nintendo will go that way or not, <laughs> um, or whether they'll use it as a way to hype up 4 as it gets closer. So I'm really split on this one, but if I had to guess, they have been sitting on it for a while. I think they'll just do it. I think they'll just go for it. Uh, when it's releasing, again, April, May, or late February. That'd be amazing. A late February Can you release. That? But <laughs> I don't see that happening because I think this will always have a physical presence and we would have found out about it by now if it did. Yeah, it's true. So, yeah, I think this will do I think this will be in the direct that I've predicted before and <laughs> it didn't materialize then. Um, so I'm going to hold out hope that it finally does appear here because I want it. I've been wanting to replay those games, but I've been holding off because I wanted to play them in HD instead of, you know, in 480p. Although I do hope that they have GameCube controller support, so I I'll predict that, sure. <laughs> There'll be GameCube controller support in Metro Prime Trilogy, only because I want it. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so I would, I'm actually going to go, I think this could be a June release. I could see it coming around, like, right around E3 time. Like, take that, like, arm slot, for instance. So, I'm going early and saying it's launching the same day as Yoshi. Oh god. oh god! I hope you're man. I hope you're right. That'd be fantastic. <laughs> so. All right, so that wraps it up for the rumored games, but there's still, of course, one that we already know will be in the direct, and that's Fire Emblem Three Houses. What does this look like to you guys? What are you kind of expecting from this, Derek? You did a whole analysis of the brief look at uh, we got at it during E3, mm -hmm. but we've really seen nothing of it since, to my recollection. So, what are you what are you kind of expecting from this? I'm expecting a full blowout. Here's the story. Here's you know some of the new characters. Here's the uh, changes to the gameplay that you guys can, that you can expect, and then. The part I'm split on is whether or not they'll give a release date. It's been a while, but I have a feeling, yes, it's going to be a full blowout, the fact that we even get a release date at the very end. So I'm thinking just, I'm actually expecting a pretty sizable chunk, of it, probably 10 minutes worth on Fire Emblem. This was originally a 2018 title originally. Um, now it's 2019. I would suspect that they're probably ready to give us a release date by now. I'd hope so. Mm. And typically Fire Emblem releases in April, May territory, so we could right. see it pretty soon. Uh, it's, it's not sure why it took so long to show more of it, but maybe they're just polishing it or something like that. Or who knows, maybe we'll have a later release date or I don't know. But I think we are going to get a blowout where a sizable chunk is of this direct is going to be directed toward... Um, Fire Emblem Three Houses. And I think the story is kind of the big point of this game. They kind of need to sell us on the characters because that's a big selling point of, of Fire Emblem. So far, we hardly know anybody in this game. Uh, we know maybe a handful of characters. 
And um, I, I guess one way to do that, one way to sell the characters is, I don't want to drop it too early, the S-bomb, the Smash bomb. Do you <laughs> think that we'll get a Fire Emblem character in Smash? Oh, man. Oh, um, God. <laughs> I mean, based on history, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to, like, legitimately, I don't think we will. I think we actually are done with Fire Emblem characters um, for now. So, I mean, maybe if there's another batch of DLC, but I don't think we'll get one in the first five. I want to agree with you, but I feel like there's something they'll do. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with Nintendo deciding. That's true. Right. Yeah. I Who knows on that one, but... I mean, it's possible, and there's definitely ways. I mean, they have de- have have made the newer Fire Emblem characters more interesting than the ones that are just clones of each other for a while. So they are doing interesting things with it. But I, I, I think the big thing here uh, I, that a lot of people are going to be curious about is whether or not they're going to have the child mechanic once again. Uh, the whole, you know, pairing up characters so they can have a child and that affects their stats and go from there. And... Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, I, I'm actually thinking they're going to be dropping that mechanic. Not not necessarily the pairing up mechanic, because that's been a, a, around Fire Emblem for a long time. But the child mechanic, I have a feeling, is just not going to be there. I think that's a hard sell as well. Like That's something that you kind of get into as the game goes on, but it's kind of hard just to sell the game based on that mechanic. Well, I'm not a huge Fire Emblem guy, but I will make one prediction, and that is it will have multiplayer of some kind. I'm go- oh, oh, And it bases only on the fact that there are two Joy-Cons built in. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that they will finally... Uh, because they've, ne- they've never really done that before, right? So You've been able to face each other off in the 3DS games. Uh, oh, have you? Okay. I believe in Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem Awakening it was possible. I, I have never explored the mode that much, but I think it was possible. Can you do co-op, though? Mm, yeah. No. So co-op might that be That could be an interesting new route. With three houses, you can have both players controlling two houses. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe. I, I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> so that wraps up for every game that we either know for sure is in there or is rumored to be in there. But of course, there are plenty of other games that we you know, either know about or heard about or presume are coming. So let's get into our proper predictions here and uh, just kind of figure out what else we might be seeing in this direct. John... I love your predictions. You want you want to start us off here? <laughs> right. So you know how Square Enix revealed a bunch of Final Fantasy games last time? I think oh they're going to do something kind of similar. Not quite as ambitious. So they're going to do a Dragon Quest section. And this Dragon Quest section is going to give us some localizations of games that aren't uh, in the West yet. So Dragon Quest XI S is going to get a release date and um, get the localization properly confirmed. Because that's just been kind of floating around for a while. Then Builders 2, again, a global release date. And they say, but wait, there's more. Dragon Quest VIII is going to be ported to Nintendo Switch. This is based on the 3DS version, but has the visuals of the initial PS2 version, but now made into HD. And then they say, but wait, there is more. (laughs) Final Fantasy VII will release right now. Go buy it on the eShop. Shadow Drops. And I I, kind of based this because Final Fantasy VII was in a Nintendo advert just uh, a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So it looks like they're getting ready to release it now. So I think Square's going to do a bunch of Dragon Quest and then just drop Final Fantasy VII right on us. I mean, I'm not... <laughs> uh, I, I can I can totally see it happening. That's the thing. I, and I would love that to finally get release dates for Builders 2 and 11S. Uh, and yeah, that's how you get people excited is you get put, put 7 on there right now. Poor Box Boy at that point. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's true. I was actually predi- uh, thinking other uh, Square Enix properties. I was thinking maybe we could see Bravely Default 3 or ports of the initial two Bravely Default games. Or even finally get that, since we got those trademarks for uh, Final Fantasy Adventure and Secret of Mana, maybe actually get the Secret of Mana trilogy from Square Enix this time around. The most exciting thing there is Bravely Third, And that, f- that feels kind of likely now, because they've been teasing that for... It feels like two years at this point. <laughs> they've been teasing it for a while. And they've, they're done with Octopath, so that team's just kind of working on something. So I, I think it's kind of time for Bravely Third at this point. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty exciting. And uh, I think, John, having Final Fantasy VII drop right after would be pretty big news. So mm. I'm going to go with you on that. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> At the very least, I expect Final Fantasy VII and IX to get release dates. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, speaking of release dates, uh, I will make a prediction that's not that far out there, that we will finally see Joker gameplay in Super Smash Bros. And it will not be released right after to the Direct John. <laughs> However, we will get a release date of March. 
So that is my guess, and we will not see any other DLC characters beyond this. I think they'll focus only only ever on one at a time. Um, so we'll never find out about a subsequent character before one before one hasn't been released. That's a good prediction. Mm -hmm. um, do you think Joker will be alone, or will will he be accompanied by some Persona news? I think it makes oh. sense that you have him accompanied by Persona news. Wasn't there that rumor not too long ago that Persona that Persona Five was coming to Switch? Yes, there was. Um, so that that panned out. Um, so uh, Atlas actually confirmed that they're going to be doing more Persona news in March. So whether that's going to be a Switch port, we don't know. But it it very well could be in this direct, and then they should have something else scheduled for March. But yeah, I, I do kind of feel like it's time. And you know, Persona Q2 has just got announced for 3DS, um, coming worldwide. So Joker's definitely making his presence on Nintendo platforms. So if a five ports to come, could be could be tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. That'd be cool. I mean, I'd be completely down for Persona 5 on, on Switch. I think that's an extremely good fit. Uh, at the very least, do you think we'll actually get to see any more -ish info on Shin Megami Tensei 5? Ooh, yeah, that's... that's is that the only um, January presentation title that hasn't released yet? Yes. I think it might be. I think... Yeah, I think it's time. Um, we've, we've had two trailers. Both of them are teaser trailers showing no gameplay. I think it's kind of time that we get a good look at that game. It's, you know, it's been two years now, so... Yeah, I, th I think it's time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I could see it happening. Like, instead of, if they want to wait on the Persona news, I think we could get that instead. Um, but you are right, Andre. I, I would expect to see Joko gameplay at this point, especially since, you know, uh, Piranha Plant is out now, so. Exactly, Piranha Plant's out. They have, I believe, a year from this month now to get all the rest of the characters out. Um, I, I believe they, they, they said by February 2020, right? Yes. And there's five of them. So, yeah, they got to get moving. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Derek, you got a prediction for us? Yes. I think we're going to get uh, release dates for the Resident Evil ports. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, I think it's, God, I hope you're right. Yeah. I, I mean, we're get, two is blowing up and doing extremely well for Capcom. Uh, it makes sense to carry that hype over to the Switch side of things. And, by the way, here's Zero, One, and 4. That's And here's where you can play them. Um, don't know when those release dates are going to be. Don't know if they'll be clumped together or spread a little farther apart, or how what what, what order they'll release them in. But I do think we'll get going to get news on those. Will Al Gigante get an amoeba? I thought you were going to say his own standalone eShop game. Yes, yes. See, I was expecting the dog to get his own amiibo. <laughs> That'd be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Where you, yeah, you, you can scan them and he just helps you throughout the entire game. Mm -hmm. That'd be amazing. Yeah, <laughs> do it. Oh, yeah, right? Uh, man, I, I would kill for any kind of Resident Evil 4 amiibo. That would be fantastic. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Love it. What kind of release dates are you expecting here? For like, Do you think they'd all drop at once? Do you think they'd be spread out over the course of the year? What's going on here with them? My thought is maybe like one a month. Although even, mm. I, although that's hard to say because look at Square Enix having Final Fantasy X and Final Fantasy XII both dropping in March or in April, whenever that is. I right. forget which date it was. But, uh, so maybe it'll be in the same month. But uh, I do f either one a month starting in March or maybe like, hey, here they are. Pick which one you want. I'm not sure. You got another prediction for us, John? Yep. Star Fox Grand Prix is real. It's finished. It was done by Retro Studios. They're now on Prime 4. Game is done. A beta is going to launch next week for you to play, and it's going to release April fifth. <laughs> Are you sure I it's not coming April first, John? <laughs> I, I looked into that. April first is a Monday. Oh, it doesn't okay. fit in, Derek. <laughs> so Star Fox Grand Prix. Yeah, that's been a very interesting game. Uh, whether whether it even exists or not, because especially with the news of Retro taking over Metro Prime 4, but presumably they've been working on something all these years, uh, and hopefully that project is finished or very close to being done. So I agree with you in that sense, John. I don't think we'll... I mean, I think that could be an E3 title um, or a game announced subsequent to this Direct, so I'm not expecting April 5th, but man, if that if that somehow ends up being the case, that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea of it. And I love the idea of it having like a beta or a demo, especially with it presumably being you know with it being online almost certainly. Uh, that you know it would be it'd be a good way to advertise it in the way they have Splatoon and uh, Arms and other games. I don't know. I, I I agree with Andre. It feels more like an E3 game, <laughs> um, but who knows? I mean, it's it's possible but 
I, I'm going to say no. I'm not, I don't think we're going to see Star Fox Grand Prix. Here's a prediction I have that some I think is less likely than Star Fox Grand Prix in this direct and in launching March, April 5th. <laughs> <laughs> and I predict Super Mario Party finally going to get a free update. We're going to get three new characters, two new boards, and ten new minigames. And it's going to have a harder river mode. It's all, and it's all coming for free within the next couple weeks. Wow. Three new boards is like twice the content. <laughs> Wait, you've already made a sequel there. <laughs> I said two boards, to be oh, specific. Oh, two boards. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. It's still, still basically a sequel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm all for that. This game <laughs> desperately needs any new content. Like, I, I really enjoyed this game, but I've not played it for a while just because I've kind of had my feel with it. So, yeah, add, add any new content and I am in. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think Nintendo's done a good job updating some of their previous games. They've been unusually quiet in Super Mario Party, but I think they're just, they've just been biding their time, and I think they will update the game, yeah, to add a fair amount of additional content, just to, you know, uh, engage, you know, better engage current owners and entice new ones as well. It's sold well, but you can keep selling well forever. So, yeah. it's Mario Party, yeah. and I'm sure they want to. As for the new characters, Pauline was just announced for Mario Tennis Aces. So put her in Mario Party. Put her in yep. every yep. game. Put her in That's Mario exactly Party. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Hell yes. Yeah, that would definitely get people excited. <laughs> yeah, it would. Have one of the band members be join her. <laughs> get this weirdly uh, realistic guy joining everybody in, in Mario Party. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally down. They can go all in on the weird of Mario Party, and I'm in. I'm there. <laughs> uh. <laughs> all right, Derek, you got another prediction? Yeah, it kind of ties into one of mine. I, I, I actually expect to see a... Um, what Camelot's working on next, which I think is either uh, much more likely a Mario Golf game for the Switch. I think that's just an inevitability at this point. Or maybe they'll throw us a curveball and then we'll actually get a Golden Sun collection. But I'm going to be honest, it's probably going to be Mario Golf. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I had Mario Golf in my predictions too. And one feature I predicted was the return of Mini Golf. Mini golf Ooh. was in Mario oh. Golf 64. Mm -hmm. but it yep. wasn't that fleshed out. It was it was good, but it, they could have made it a bit more flashy. Um, but it's just been absent since then. So make a really flashy mini golf course for the new Mario Golf. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna take that one step farther, John. I will say mini golf will be there, but it will be in handheld form only or tabletop <laughs> form only. You use a touch screen to precisely aim and give the exact power you want of your shot. And uh, you can see the entire course all at once on the touchscreen. So, there you go. <laughs> really, really deserving the name Mini there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. Oh, man, that'd be awesome. That'd be really fun. Mario, Mario Golf can be such a great party game. And it's been far too long before we've had a truly great one, let alone one on consoles. So oh, I, I, yeah, the, the, the last console Mario Golf was on GameCube. <laughs> Which yeah. was, a, yeah, yeah, that's right. And it, it was ported to the Wii as well, I believe. Or was it? Maybe it wasn't. I think it was. I think, I think it was. was. But, well, Mario oh, Tennis was. Yeah. Maybe it wasn't. That's right. Oh, geez. Man, so it has been, it's been decades. <laughs> 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 it's time. It is time. Make that happen and make it in the vein of that game, which is probably, the, that was the last great Mario Golf game. So, mm -hmm. and I think they'll have an actual, uh, I think they will have a Wii-esque uh, swing mode where you use a Joy-Cons, you actually do a full swing. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that could be a good way of, you know, bringing in non-gamers as well. Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Aces does that too, so there is precedent for that to happen. I guess it's, uh, I think, is it my turn again for a prediction? I think, so, I think it yeah. is. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. I'm going, uh, so in the recent investors meeting, um, Nintendo kind of drew attention, I think it was the investors meeting, or, or some interview perhaps, but Nintendo drew attention to the fact uh, about DLC, how it's, been, how it's been working out pretty well for them, and they have been looking at um, continually supporting perhaps even their, their older games at this point. And... I predicted it before. I said that Mario Odyssey would get, would get DLC. It hasn't come to fruition yet, but I'm sticking with it. I think we will still get DLC, except I'm going to take a slightly different tactic this time. I, I may have mentioned it before, but I think it'll get DLC in the same way that Xenoblade Chronicles 2 did, in that it will, it'll be a standalone. It'll be a standalone thing for a cheaper price than the full game, and you don't need the original game to. You don't need the original game to enjoy it if you don't have it. Um, so I think it will be a. I think it will be like a full adventure, maybe a little bit smaller in scale than the original game, but it'll have at least four to five new worlds for you to explore. I had a very similar prediction too, uh, even with the tourna bit in there. And yeah, I think this is going to be not Mario. I think this is, we've said this before in our previous predictions, but I think this is rather going to be a Princess Peach adventure. She got, out, she got out, of our, out of her comfort zone at the end of Odyssey, and I think this is time for her to really spread her wings and just, just go for it. 
Well, speaking of spreading her wings, so she she wasn't dressed in a dress at the end, so can she fly? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> Does she need the dress to fly, first off, and can she in this expansion? I think she... Yeah, I think she can. Like, <laughs> we've never seen her use Tiara. Like, I assume they have the same powers as Cappy, but we don't know yet. So I guess for her to get across gaps, she might just be able to float rather than throw Tiara and bounce off her. Can you imagine the crazy jumps you could do if you can still jump with Tiara oh and float? Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah, the movement options. If you can actually... If she they actually transferred her floating to 3D, that would be... Mm. That'd be a lot of fun, a lot of potential, and they'd, there'd be some fun playgrounds there that they could design around Peach's move set. One thing I think is very like one thing pointing towards this being likely is Peach and Tiara are still together in Odyssey. Like even at the end, they're still just sort Good of point. chilling out. It just and, and they're all wearing, wearing different costumes too, which is what Mario does in the game. It just feels like feels like they're kind of making her like building her up to be a new character, like a playable character. I, I feel this. Is, I feel this is really likely. I think so, and I think there's a good chance too that they will revisit some regions from the previous game, along with all new ones. But the difference this time would be the previous regions would would take place in new areas of that region, so in a mm. different district of New Donk City, for instance, mm. um, or a different area of the Desert Kingdom or Sand Kingdom, I should say. Yeah. So, and I think we all know what the Seaside Kingdom's going to be. No, oh, uh, Isle Delfino. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I think it would be Why cool if the, the Sand Kingdom like turns out to be in the same part of like where Sahasra Land is. <laughs> that would be, be cool. cool. Maya Daisy. And as a quick reminder, Island of Fino was originally on the in-game map for Mario Odyssey before being removed, oddly. So, mm. um, so yeah, there is precedent for it, for it, perhaps it, for it, perhaps finally coming to the game. So that would be, I would actually be okay with that. <laughs> that would be neat. And I love the Prince of Peach idea. All right, John, another prediction. Speaking of DLC, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe had quite a lot of new features when it first came out, but I feel like there's still room for more. <laughs> um, so I think they're going to have a bunch of new playable characters, and these ones are weirdly absent. Um, Diddy Kong, Dixie Kong, Cranky Kong, and Funky Kong, and Pauline are going to be joining Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. A lot of these guys have been in Mario Kart before, but they've not been in there since Mario Kart Wii, or at least you know, a few other installments since then. And not only are they going to be coming to the game, but there's going to be two brand new DLC cups. One is Donkey Kong themed. There's going to be two new Donkey Kong levels with two returning ones. There's going to be two brand new levels and then just two more returning ones. Eight tracks in total, uh, four returning ones, two DK themed ones, and two brand new ones. <laughs> I love wow. it. I'm all about this. <laughs> I mean, any reason to get me, get me to finally go back to Mario Kart 8, that'd be great. So Base one of the tracks off Sawmill Thrill. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> it, could be, it could be a one lap track. Right. It'd have yes. to be. <laughs> That'd be so cool. <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh -huh. I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know about the specifics of that, even though I love it, but I kind of agree with you. I think there's a good chance we'll see more Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC. I don't think they're done with that game. They've been updating the game continually, such as for Labo. Um, and while we've got, we haven't received anything huge for DLC, I think now might be the time. That'd be a great way of, um, you know, giving us something in the meantime to chew on, you know, before E3. So. Mm -hmm. A and Mario Kart Tour's on the horizon, so it kind of makes sense just to keep pushing this one title and give it a bit more value. Good point. Yeah, true. I mean, you think they, I mean, you have Pauline there, you don't think they put it in a, uh, I guess for a new track, it could be a New Donk City course. Yeah. And with the anti-gravity, that, that, that could do some fun things. Have the dinosaur in there. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yes. yes. That's essential. <laughs> Perfect. No, better yet, make the dinosaur a DLC character. Uh, I'll race the T-Rex. <laughs> <laughs> Question. Is this free, or is this paid? Paid. I feel like Pauline would be free, but all the Donkey Kong content would be paid. Because the problem with that, then, is you're splitting the online user base mm. uh, into people that have the DLC and don't. And granted, they did this before, so that very well could still be the case. It just it kind of sucks when that happens, um, because you're splintering the, uh, the available users or whichever track selection you want. Yeah, it, it does suck, but... Because they did it before, I don't think they would not do it this time. Yeah. So I will, I will take the opposite. I will say I think, uh, I think this will be free. I think Nintendo might be going. Uh, I think this might be a new Nintendo where they provide uh, continuous or not continuous, but like free updates to multiplayer games and keep the uh, the paid for stuff for the single player content or you know uh, purely optional like cosmetic multiplayer gear, for instance. Um, mm -hmm. Even even in which characters could work, such as in you know Smash, which we've already seen. So yeah, I think uh, I think there is DLC coming. I think it'll be free. 
Well, let's, let's get middle ground here. What if the DLC is Nintendo online membership exclusive? So, oh. you're, well, people I, who do yeah, not pay that, for that service don't get it. And that way, if you are paying for online, everyone online can still play together. I like that. that that's not a bad way of handling it. So what this would mean is if you're playing Mario Kart single player, you just can't play the tracks at all. I don't know if they need to go that route, though, because, I mean, the appeal of Mario Kart is playing online anyway, anyway right? So that might, I mean, while that's cool if you have Nintendo, if you have NSO, that might upset a lot of people who have no other way of getting it. So, I mean, I, I feel like at this point, if you're, you know, with the game being online focused anyway, I feel like um, they can make it free without, I, I think they could keep it free without upsetting anyone. So, mm -hmm. uh -huh. all right. Another prediction, John? <laughs> I think he died. was his prediction. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's Derek's turn. <laughs> I'm going to bring oh, you guys right, back down to earth <laughs> a <Yep>. little bit. <laughs> I, I do think we're gonna. I think we're gonna get some release dates, just some quick release dates, maybe some gameplay or something like that for Damon X Machina and Marvel Ultimate Alliance Three. I actually think Ultimate Alliance Three is probably due pretty soon. Just considering that Avengers is on its way, it makes sense to release that game around uh, Endgame. So uh -huh. get that tie in. So I think we're gonna get release dates for both those games. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So Marvel Ultimate Alliance has a lot of uh, Avengers influence too. Like most of the character designs look very similar, mm -hmm. and it has the Black Order, of course, which are linked directly with Infinity War and Endgame. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense to release that maybe around May, I suppose. Uh, yeah, around May, or I think it comes out in April. I forget when Endgame comes out. I think it's April, but it's still around mm. April, May, a good release date for it. I think that all makes sense. All right, I've got a prediction here. It's not a, it's not a happy one, though. I'm going to predict Ooh. a bunch of no's. A bunch of games that aren't appearing in this direct at all. <laughs> there's going to be no Bayonetta 3, no Luigi's Mansion 3, no Labo, though I don't think they're done with it, but there's going to be no Labo here, no Metroid Prime 4, and most importantly, sadly, no Animal Crossing. Hmm. hmm. I don't know if I agree with Luigi's Mansion. Everything else? Possibly. I feel like Luigi's Mansion is closer than we think, though. I hope you're right, but I think I think it's gonna be a later year title. Not sure on that one. I can see Luigi's Mansion not being shown. I have a feeling Animal Crossing will be shown. That's the one I disagree with. I have a feeling they they'll at least tease Animal Crossing in some way because, boy, those fans are rabid and they want that info. <laughs> so I have it, a feeling that might throw them a bone and show a little bit of Animal Crossing. It is one of the year's biggest titles, but if we read too much into their description, they, they focus uh, on saying that it's going to include Fire Emblem Three Houses. And arguably, Animal Crossing is bigger than Three Houses, so why wouldn't they include it on there? So I, I guess, yeah, I, I think I might, I might agree that uh, Animal Crossing may be absent this time. Hmm. Yeah, I think Animal Crossing will definitely get its own direct at some point. That doesn't hmm. mean they couldn't show it before then. Um, I just feel like now may not be the time, so... I don't know. I, for some reason, I have a feeling we could see at least a little bit of Animal Crossing. Not anything major, but just enough to see the assets or the town or certain characters or what have you. Like, I feel like there's going to be at least a little bit there just to satiate the fans. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. <laughs> <laughs> as far as everything else, yeah, I agree. I mean, John might be right about Luigi's Mansion 3, but I definitely know, definitely know Metroid Prime 4. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to say, I, ca I casually threw it in there, but I mean, duh. Of yeah. course, there's no Metroid Prime 4. Definitely not that. <laughs> Just use the same teaser from last time that says now in development again. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the exact same. That'd be amazing. Mm -hmm. That would be fantastic. I, but I also agree about uh, Bayonetta 3. No Bayonetta 3. All right. Any other predictions? All right. I think Mario Strikers 3 is going to debut. And you may oh. say, John, next level games are busy with Luigi's Mansion, you madman. Well, <laughs> Monster Games are developing this one. Oh my god. Monster Games is pretty solid. So the only, the only problem is I don't think we're going to get two Mario Sports games in the same direct. So it's either mm. Strikers or it's Golf. And while, while I, I hope Strikers exists, I think Golf is more likely at this point. Yeah, I, I agree with that, but they, I guess they do need to get more Mario sports games out there, though. Because that's yeah, true. It's just <laughs> us that we have at the moment, right? Like, there's no other Mario sports games on Switch. Yeah, that's um, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it's time to just open the floodgates and get all those spin-offs out there. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> um, what did Monster Games work on? Were they the ones that did like, Strike Excite Truck? Right, yeah, they, okay. they did. Yeah, they, they did Side Truck. They did um, the 3DS port of uh, of uh, Donkey Kong Country Returns. Yeah, very solid. They did the Side Bike game on Wii on WiiWare. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, they did. Yes, they they're, they're busy with the Excite series. 
Oh, well, there you go. I think new they've excite- helped out in development. New Excite Bike. With various games, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm down. <laughs> All right, anything else? Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to throw this in there for Ash. I think we might get a Me- Mega Man X9 reveal because we got Mega Man 11 revealed in December, then got it like the following um, October. So I think we're right around the time where we could do reveal X9 and get it later in the year. That'd be very cool. I, the, the only thing that makes me say no to that is um, Capcom announced Mega Man 11 on their own. True. And I, I wonder if they would if they would do that in a direct or not. I think it's definitely coming. There's no, there's no doubt that this game's in development. They've been pushing X quite a lot recently with their marketing. Um, yeah, I, I, I hope so. That'd be really cool if they do. Mm-hmm. I'd, I'd love it. I mean, it'd be really cool. I think people would get hyped for it. I don't know how well Mega Man sold on, on Switch compared to the other systems, but... I feel like there's a you know, massive fan base there. Yeah, that, that is a good factor. If it was primarily sold on Switch, then of course they'll put it in a direct, because that's where their audience is. All right, uh, obvious prediction that I just have to say to get it out there. Yoshi's Crafted World will be here. We'll see even more of it, mm-hmm. because that's coming out pretty soon. So, yeah, just gonna yeah, just had to get it out there. And another <laughs> obvious one, mm-hmm. we got that listing on Ubisoft. Probably Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered is going to get shown. That's oh, a good of course. one. Yep. Uh, here's one. There's going to be a Mario vs. Donkey Kong game that we like the look of. There'll be no oh, minis. Oh, oh. We're going to be into God. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Is it going to be a puzzle game or more of a platformer like the original? What are you picturing here, John? I'm picturing Donkey Kong 94. Exactly. Just with modern visuals. <laughs> 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 Is this just because you were playing the game recently? <laughs> if they, like, start... May, may, oh, like, what if you play as DK Jr. in this game? And um, it, it's in, like how Donkey Kong 94 was based on the original Donkey Kong. What if you have basically a Mario vs. Donkey Kong game based off Donkey Kong Jr.? That'd be something. That'd be cool. That could work. You know, time to, let's bring him back. It's How long has it been since we've seen that guy? Uh, quite a while. <laughs> you did a whole He's missing, missing in action. action. Yeah, yeah I know. I'm trying so. to remember the last time. We, I think the last time we showed up was Mario Tennis. <laughs> oh, the original one, right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the last time he appeared, so... Other than no, like, I think he might have been in the background in Double Dash in the stage. Oh, uh, right. Stadium? Yeah, that's the, that key role. I forgot about that one. <laughs> 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 I mean, that'd be cool. I'd find a way to update and like make uh, the movement in, uh, with Junior that much crazier. Yeah, I mean, I think we have seen NST doing some hiring recently as well. So they have something brewing. The question is, what is it, right? <laughs> and it probably is another Mario vs. Donkey Kong <laughs> game, honestly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean... You know, I just want something to come out, come out from them. Um, I would love, though, if they surprise us all and they're finally doing a sequel to Wave Race Blue Storm. Give mm. us a brand new Wave Race. Mm, the really producer's cool. been alluding to it for a while now. So, That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, there's a basis. How great would it be with HD Rumble? It would be <laughs> so fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Feeling the waves and all that. That'd be cool. All right, guys. Do we have anything else you want to get out there? I'm going to go for my long shot. Please, please let it happen. A Castlevania uh, uh, Switch collection. I don't know. Don't care what games. Just put something out there. We got the Belmonts in Smash. Come on, come on, I mean, Put something Castlevania related on the Switch. I, I'd love it if Rebirth was in there too. Yes. Because <clears throat> the WiiWare service just went dead. We can't get those games anymore. So find some way to like, let us play them. Exactly. That'd be... Uh, even a Rebirth collection would be kind of nice. Just because you know, all those games that are now gone on the WiiWare. Hey, then now they're back. I just started watching the show last night on Netflix, so yeah, I would love to be able to play those games. I've barely touched them over the years. Mm-hmm. I think there's a yeah. nice market there that they're not taking advantage of that people just haven't tried out yet, and a collection in the same vein as Mega Man would make a lot of sense. Whether Konami has that sense, uh, Jerry's still out. <laughs> in the mm-hmm. same castle vein? Uh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> yeah, you'd be ashamed of that That was one. an attempt. <laughs> <laughs> It's still early for me. I just woke up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time, yeah, so. yeah. Blame it on that. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I have a question for you guys. Do you think we'll actually get SNES games on the online? Oh, yeah. How could we forget that? Um, I mean, that's happening, obviously. Uh, there was a whole data mine, in fact, that mm-hmm. showed it's very likely to happen. I think... Oh, that's tough. Uh, if I had to say, no, it won't be here. It'll be its own, like... So special surprise announcement. It's like, hey, here you go. Here's a bunch of Super Nintendo games. Um, it will be announced soon, but independently of the Direct. We already know the NES lineup for this month, which troubles me to think that they would add Super Nintendo games this month as well. Mm-hmm. But eh, I'll say they will. I think it's 
NES Online is very uninteresting, <laughs> and they kind of need a way to make it like more exciting as soon as possible, really. And if they have these Super Nintendo games ready, as the data mine suggests, uh, yeah, just just put them out there. I can see them just putting it out there, like, hey, like, there's your stealth release. SNES games are now on the Switch online. We have a lot of stealth releases um, this time. Yeah, we, have, we do. We have, Boy, <laughs> uh, we have Final Fantasy VII, and we have, like, 30 Super Nintendo games. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Perfect. I don't think those are all going to happen. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> as, cool as, that, as cool as that would be. As always, everything we're predicting is not like everything's going to happen. It's just chances of happening. <laughs> all right, guys. Any any other predictions, long shots, or things we, we missed that you want to get out there? All right, one last thing for me. Sega nice. Ages is getting an expansion, bringing in Dreamcast games to Switch. Oh, uh, my Crazy God. Taxi with The Offspring is going to be on here. <laughs> They have not had that since the Dreamcast version. It's going to be here, and it's going to be just maintained as it originally was, but with some online features. And speaking of online features, Chushu Rocket is going to be in this collection too, or or at least be available to purchase. And that will have full online play, just like it was was on the Dreamcast back in the day. Ooh, that'd be awesome. Oh, MG. <laughs> and Choo Choo Rocket with a great. single Joy-Con is flawless. Like that, that works so well. Mm-hmm. Like that would, really would work. You literally just have an analog stick and the buttons, and that's all you need. Yeah. And what would be really cool is that they even had, again, a tabletop mode where you can play just sitting around the Switch with the board on the screen itself. And um, yeah, I mean, I guess it, well, that would work really well for single player where you just swipe it to, to do what you want. But even yeah. for multiplayer where you each have a Joy-Con. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that'd be a perfect Switch game, I think. Yeah. That, give me some of the Amigo on Switch, and I'll be a happy camper. <laughs> perfect. And uh, Crazy Taxi with Offspring. Because it's not Crazy Taxi without the Offspring. Exactly. And Bad Religion. Let's not forget Bad Religion was in the game, too. So <laughs> <laughs> There you go. All right. Is that, is that all our predictions? I'm just going to throw out, we might see gameplay of town. I'm not sure of that. Uh, we'll see if we'll get more info on that. I'm not... Fully sure of that one. We might actually see Spyro Trilogy, though. I mean that. I mean that's for sure coming. So I think it's possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very likely. I think Town even. Town's more likely now than E3. Like Town Town is a, a small scale eShop exclusive. It seems is that's not really E3 material anymore. I mean, they they debu- was it the September direct that we first saw it? I think so. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, I'd, I'd so. say. Yeah. I'd say it's more likely now than in June, unless there's another direct. You know, in between now and then. I, I wouldn't doubt it. There's another direct uh, before before between now and E3. Uh, All right, guys. Anything else? Uh, I think I'm tapped. All right. Yeah, I've I've just got one more. So I think <laughs> Kingdom Hearts <laughs> is going to come to Switch. Not Kingdom Hearts three though, and not Kingdom Hearts the story so far either. So I was looking into this. Uh, Kingdom Hearts the story so far, which includes 1.5, 2.5, and 2.8 is nearly 40 gigabytes, and getting that on Switch would be tough. And 0.2, which is in 2.8, um, is basically the precursor to 3, and that's going to be trouble- troublesome to get on Switch, so I don't think that's going to come. Instead, I think they're going to give us 1.5 and 2.5 individually. No 2.8, just 2.5 and 1.5. Sell them both, and that's your Kingdom Hearts on Switch. That makes sense, yeah. <laughs> I think that makes complete sense to have Kingdom Hearts on the Switch and it's I mean it was done on the PS3 you can use those versions if the PS4 ones are just too much for it and boom you're good <laughs> man if everything we said comes to fruition uh, they have a lot to pack in 35 minutes yeah exactly <laughs> that's what I'm saying all my predictions on here are not uh, like like definitely all going to happen. It's just like, some of these things have a good chance of happening. Maybe they'll overlap. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> so, so how are we feeling overall about this Direct? How, how, what's your hype level at right now? I'm pretty hyped. Um, the last major Direct was in September. We've had a Smash one since then, but um, apparently this is the longest time in years since a Direct. So they've got a lot of stuff to pack in. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty excited. I think there's a lot of potential here, and I'm always more exci- always excited to see what's ca- happening with Fire Emblem. So at the very least, we'll have that. Uh, and I don't know. I think they'll have. I think they'll pull out some pretty fun surprises. I think that's what I'm most excited for is you know what everything we don't know because um, while we do know about a, a decent amount of titles coming this year, I feel like there's also a lot that we don't. And I'm excited to find out what those are, and especially DLC. Nintendo did make it a focus that there will be, you know, that it seems like they'll be announcing more DLC in the near future for possibly even past games, as I already said. I want to see what form that takes. Hopefully, something similar to what we already gave, if not even better. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I'm pretty excited too. Like, I don't know, my hype, my hype's pretty managed. Like, I'm keeping it pretty man- at a managed level at this point. 
Um, so yeah, I'm really excited for, you know, just to see what, you know, just to see what is finally in this direct that it seemingly everyone's been waiting for. If you looked at the comments on Nintendo's Mario, New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe tweet yesterday, you can tell <laughs> there is a hunger right now for a direct. There's so, always a hunger for a direct. That's true. <laughs> oh yeah, as soon true. as this ends, people are going to be begging for the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Even as soon as this discussion ends, right? We can have, they can have one for every two weeks and people wouldn't get tired of them. <laughs> yeah, so true. And with that, I think we're about done here. So thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, make sure that you uh, like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter uh, using the links in the description below, which go away to keep up to date on everything we post, including everything coming from the Direct, which we'll be covering exhaustively, of course, starting tomorrow. So stay tuned for all of that. And with that, we'll catch you later. Thanks for watching. Bye.